you fear, if you have to write and if you're not writing, the best way is just to write it, right? Uh, to write as many as possible so that it gets easy. Just basically at some point you'll get the hang of it. So I, I would say it's the same. Whatever we give you, it's a chance, an opportunity for you to code more, to read more, to understand. And you know, it's kind of, you can ask many people, it's like, okay, that. So that is the only way that at least I can see. And you improve it just by doing something, you know, by doing it every day. Hope that will help. Hello. Hello, Hello. Okay. Uh, when we were discussing with our colleagues, yeah. there was a confusion about which data to use. I think on the Tuesday folder in the Google Drive of Week Zero, there was a CSV which said clean the fintech uh, data yeah. CSV. I think and that, uh, that is that is not the one. So that that is that is basically like for the tutorial maybe that was used. Um, I'm not sure, but for for us, what is available is that in the GitHub, when you fork it, there is the in, in the data folder there is the uncleaned like. But of course, you started cleaning it maybe on Monday, so you will use that one. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. So it's the same for everyone, yeah. So just uh, they, let let there not be confusion about which data. Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah. Yes. Vincent or David? Which we? Yeah, David. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Doctor Abdul. Uh, I have uh, a question, but also it may be a suggestion. Uh, some of us. Uh, have been us have been uh, struggling with uh, platform the, the technology you are using. <laughs> for example, uh, uh, for myself, I am uh, I have been uh, using Anaconda platform to use the Jupyter notebook. But uh, you as a, you are using uh, the Google Collab, and I am new for all this and using, and instead of focusing. In the main uh, task, I have to read uh, about. Mm. But I mean, I think Collab is just the same as uh, Jupyter Notebook. So I don't, no one is asking anyone to change um, any, if, if you, as long as you know how to code, you know, you have a platform that you use to code Python, um, as well as also just Jupyter Notebook, it's easier because it's, that's how it, deployer like where we, we just sometimes do data analysis easily and we can uh, evaluate them very easily because when you submit it to give to the git we can see the plots as well as the data as well as the errors and everything but other than that just keep using that i think there's um, i mean and there's no difference between the two one is online the other one is just on your computer so when you sometimes want to use uh, uh, I like kind of uh, GPUs you may need if you don't have it you may benefit from Colab because Colab offers that but other than that you shouldn't at all worry about that just just use what you what you what you do and for this rebarakat you mentioned the notebook like so the interim report is not I mean the notebook is something else I mean, I don't know what you mean by notebook, but the end, like the analysis is done in Jupyter notebook. That will be just a notebook, Jupyter notebook. That is the Python code with its plots and stuff. And then the report is a PDF file that you should submit um, in, um, in in Google Class. So the two are different. I don't know if you if you mean notebook or what the file means. Uh, something Excuse else. me, sir. Yeah. Just a, a point of clarification. I would like to confirm for the data that you're using for task three, you're not using the fintech data. No. So we are not using the fintech data is really more for the tutorials that was used. But so that, uh, one, so that, well, that is that not the that is not the challenge. The challenge is based on the other data that is included inside the Twitter folder in the Git that you have. Uh, okay, uh, another, okay, so even that includes the, the data to be used for task two? So what is task, yeah, is that everything that we do in this challenge, the one that's described in yeah. the challenge document, 
is mm -hmm. that that you will use the same data that data only okay okay, okay so Mahalit is also here I've seen her is, is Mahalit already here um yeah, so the lalem, the one in the repo, after you clean it, exactly, you clean yourself and everything, exactly. Um, Hello? Yeah, Vincent, yeah. Yeah, good afternoon. I have a, a problem. Since yesterday, I've not seen the Google Drive for day two. I don't know if it's only me or um, any other person has faced that challenge. I've not seen that Google Drive. I've not seen the start notebook that uh, we are talking about. And I, I don't know if you can help me. I've been asking in the channels, but uh, I've not gotten the exact response that would get me moving. So maybe you can uh, address that so that I find a way to go through it. I just posted now the link. So yeah, you, yeah, I, I saw it. Thank you. Thank so you. you should have it. Yeah. Okay, so, um, yeah. yeah. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good morning. Yes. Good afternoon. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Um, please, can you hear me? We do. Okay. Um, I have a question concerning the JIT, um, the JIT hub and the bash. Um, okay. Since Monday, I've been stuck and um, I, I, I've been trying to clone um, mm -hmm. the JIT and the rest rep, repo to my to my um, JIT batch, but each time I do that, um, get try to get the status, I get a a fatal um, a notification or a message that um, I don't have a JIT rep rest repo on my desktop. Ah. No, but so, so you, do you have a, a Git account? Yeah. Have you created an account, a GitHub account? Yes, I, I do have a GitHub account. And have you logged into it? And so you can see your GitHub account. Like basically, can you log into it and see? Yes, I can log profile? into it. I can, I can then, log into it. Yeah, then from there, it's basically just the... Um, it should just be very simple. Um, so I'm just gonna, so you go to this link, right? And then you basically, when you when you open it in the same browser and when you are logged in, and when you say then on the top fork, then it should just be easy just to fork. Okay, okay, thank you. I'll do that now. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so, in the interest, so is is a uh, David still up your hand, or you, you want to ask another question? No, no. Um, okay. Thank you. Okay, so let's. I don't know. Mahalit maybe is struggling with internet, so for now let's just go through. Um, so the tutorial. So what we want at this now is the. So the tutorial is on showing you at least kind of, it's kind of giving an idea on the, how do you go into doing the modeling because the tasks are involved that you have to do the, um, that uh, you load the data and you kind of do some analysis like uh, cleaning and then after cleaning you, sub, you basically will just proceed. So you clean it or you kind of, uh, do all the pre-processing so that you get a cleaner or uh, reasonable data that you would use to to do topic modeling. So, what is so? Maybe just I will ask actually who has done already before uh, topic modeling or NLP tasks that they have to read text data and kind of decompose it and try to find some information, insight from a text data, or it's called in general, natural language processing. Anyone? Or how many in general? Okay. So at least, yeah. 
So great that there are some people here who has done topic modeling. So you could also help just what is, so what we really are trying to do in topic modeling is that it's a very similar that we humans do it very naturally, easily, right? So we read a tweet and what we do is that we understand in which area it falls, which, what is the kind of topic the person is discussing. So we summarize it basically. Um, and on top of summary that we can actually relate to it in different contexts. So, so that understanding of the topic that this thing is discussing, especially if two tweets, sometimes we are interested if two tweets, like if there are two tweets, are they talking about the same thing, different? Even if it's like they're the same, are they talking about the same topic? So just that part is what we are trying to model. And of course, com you know, the things that we are using mostly aren't as good as us, but if we do a more complicated models like uh, deep learning, we apply, we sometimes can get closer. But NLP is not an easy task because it really is, unlike pictures, reading, you know, distinguishing cats and dogs in a picture, topics are much more subtle um, and relates in, you know. So it, it, there are also a lot of complications around um, that it could be um, written in a different way, exclamation marks can change um, the, the kind of like the topic itself, whether especially also when, when we are trying to model it together with a sentiment. A sentiment is whether something is, whether the tweet in this case is positive or negative in terms of um, emotions or like in terms of like perception. Is that, does it have like a neutral like, Inform, neutral, for example, information is neutral. But then sometimes, like, if it's a review, for example, or, like, this thing is not good, that's a kind of a negative uh, sentiment, while a positive sentiment is like, oh, I like it, you know, things like that. So that's called the sentiment of the tweet. So um, there are a number of ways we can just, of course, model um, or represent the first part of any tweet modeling is, is kind of representing it because a tweet contains so many things and we have to decompose and clean. So um, Mahalit, if you can, just let me know so that I can just hand over. Um, uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, let me start, but before going to this uh, uh, part, I should have to provide the yesterday's topic. Okay, great. So, so I will just hand over. So I, I will stop presenting or should, do you want me to present? Just I will present. Okay, great. So, um, sorry for the delay first and for my laziness. And let me start describing this notebook for you, from, starting from the very beginning. As we, uh, Mr. Abbal also told you, this uh, tutor um, topic modeling and sentiment analysis on tutor data set is more about uh, natural language processing. And here we have two tasks to perform as uh, a natural language processing task. So. This topic modeling and sentiment analysis will help us to, uh, in order to gather users' opinion and also in order to cluster what users are saying about our specific product or else about our service. So we can mine them using these two techniques. So here as a, an exercise, I have uh, topic modeling and sentiment analysis for today. I am only covering the topic modeling part, but yeah, last time uh, we have a session with Mr. Rosman. So when we talk about topic modeling, topic modeling is all about extracting abstract topic from a given tweet. So it's all about mapping uh, the tweets and the possible uh, topic words, extracting those things. So here, uh, from the very beginning, we have the data understanding part on our uh, data science workflow. So in order to understand our data, we should have to first load each and every package which is needed for us. So we have, I have loaded 
some package here which I'm using for further processing. And also this data application step, you are already passed through it and you can either load the JSON file or CSV, your CSV file or else you can go to Twitter and apply for developer account and you will get your, once you will get your API key, you are able to uh, scrap whatever needed from the Twitter. But for my case, I'm using only the predefined data sets, which is found in this directory. So I'm loading it. So I have a general look, look about my data set. So here, my data set contains a lot of things, but from these things, I only uh, want to clean everything because data may sometimes contains unnecessary thing for our purpose. For example, for my topic modeling case, I only need the uh, tweets part. Nothing else more is needed for me. So I should have to clean the tweets. I should have to go to series of pre-processing steps from uh, this one, you can see I'm um, printing the information about my data set. So I can see the counts and also the null values, uh, non null values and data type. From here, I can drive, okay, for topic modeling, I want only this, uh, the original text or what you call it, the tweets only. So I can, I can extend my data frame only to tweets or, uh, original text as a tweet. So here there are so many things which we have to do to prepare my data set in order to perform. If I want for the 10 sentiment analysis case, I should have to go to text below and extract sentiments or this uh, sentiment sessions which have, uh, I have this one, polar and subjectivity. So I should have to change them into, in terms of positive, negative and neutral grip. Uh, values in order to classify my uh, my tweets into either positive or negative or neutral or else here also I have to spot my uh, the errors which are found in my data set so here I can see the null values also when we talk about these errors it's not about null values but uh, it's uh, you can go more apart from these null values. Null values are one of the errors, but there are duplicates or there are uh, an unnecessary uh, uh, entries are there. So you should have to filter out all things based on your need. So here for the data preparation, what I have spotted in the early step, I will try to fix them. So from the text, I only need these uh, original text and clean text and language because I want to uh, extend my data frame uh, those uh, which are tweeted by English only. So here I can, at this step, I'm able to, let me show you one example in order to classify my tweets into language. So. I can extend my data frame using this uh, data frame method. And also uh, I can count the values for uh, the, the tweets for tweet count for each language. And I can print up uh, five printed uh, tweets. So here I can see English and ET, Indian and more are there. So I, I only need the English part. So I will extend my data set using this uh, the line of code in order to print out only those data who are having English as a language. So to clean them, I will go to series of steps. First of all, for text uh, cleaning, you should have to lower them because when you see my, uh, the, when I see here, let me go back to the top and here, you can see the type of my uh, uh, original text and clean text is not uh, as a string, but an object. So I should have to convert them into a string which can be manipulated as a text. So I should have to convert it to text value by 
dot string uh, method uh, as type to string. Then here for text processing, we have text lowering uh, or lowercase uh, and removing punctuation marks, unnecessary things, hashtags, and many, many more are there as a text uh, impurity. So we should have to clean all of them. Or uh, as an example, I have removed a punctuation mark for this case, but it's better to extend your model in order to perform, uh, in order to get a better model. You should have to have like uh, steaming, Lemmatization or removing these affix and suffix from the given word or the thinning part or uh, searching for the lemma of the words in the lemmatization. All these are given under the NLTK. You can go by, by yourself and try to check what are they are talking about. And here I have printed most popular words which are found in my texts as a word block. So from this, you can see that carbon emission and carbon, oh, more of more or less, they are talking about this carbon emission and desert, uh, desertification. So this gives me uh, an insight to our, my topic model. So my um, from my data set, my topic is more or less focusing on this uh, carbon emission and related stuffs. So. Once you have finished this thing, it's a part for your modeling part. So we can extend this one to the modeling part. And when you come back to this modeling part, we have to build up. Is there any question? Okay. So, for modeling part, we are using uh, LD as a modeling uh, algorithm because there are many more algorithms are there. Uh, like uh, this is like what we call it as a Latin semantic analysis or probability Latin semantic analysis. There are many more out there. They are also based on distribution hypothesis. Can you move your mic? So this LED algorithm is based on distributional hypothesis. So I can have uh, the previous steps for my uh, data modeling. So once I have finished that, I will go to the modeling part or model building part. In the model building, uh, I use LDA as an algorithm which maps H to H with its topic. So in order to put uh, text directly to machine learning algorithm is not possible. So I have to think of like uh, feature, uh, feature transformation or feature engineering step. So I should have to gain insight about my data in terms of numbers. So I should have to convert everything which is found in my data set into numbers. So first of all, I will uh, split uh, my tutor data uh, uh, tweets into sentence wise. Then I will split into words. Then each word have its own uh, ID starting from one. So Jensen may provide us a better way to implement dictionaries for word lists, which, uh, which can map words to its ID. And also the next is uh, to point out your, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, tweets related to the word ID. So this corpus one contains every tweets or let, let me print it in order to show you.
It contains the mapping between your uh, words and tweets. So your word is here expressed as ID. So here word to ID can represent our uh, word to ID representation. So So here it's uh, as if it was changing directory, it's not visible for you, but it contains each word mapping with its word ID. At the end of the day, you can print this one and see it by looping it. And for the building and day model, we are using some parameters, which is predefined for LDA. So I am extending the default LDA model from Jensen and Jensen will provide me uh, like I should have to provide it the word and um, the word mapping between uh, the documents and the word or the tweets so word ID and tweet mapping will be for presence if the word uh, if the word contains the uh, the tweet contains the word it will mark as one and if the word occurs more than one, it will add by adding uh, one, it will extend that. So if we find the, the two times on the uh, tweets, so it can give one uh, to the first one and two for the second one for document to ID mapping. But uh, the ID is similar. So here we have given a predefined number of topics. So I want to predict uh, five topics from this tweet and also I want to select five uh, words which are uh, which helps me to cluster this uh, tweet document into uh, uh, into clusters uh, five clusters so uh, there are other predefined values like random state which can serve as a seed or if you want to repeat uh, exactly what you are training so will go for this seed value and also update uh, update every is stands for your model your model updation process so when your model update so it's based on your chunk size so after 100 uh, after one chunk size it should have to update itself and chunk size or you can name as a byte size so it will the number of tweets which can consider at one time and pass are for how many iterations should the whole corpus should have to go. I have defined it as a hundred and uh, my chunk size is uh, chunk size is hundred and pass for ten and also this alpha for auto is. Learn, learning rate or your model learning rate so it's uh, learn asymmetric uh, asymmetric prior from the data so in this way your LDA model can learn and forward topics are the extraction of uh, words which is given to uh, uh, which is talked about as a topic so it's set true or it's a text boolean value then once you have set everything here then you will try to load your model uh, your uh, model result here i can you can see the result for my model so i have uh, topic zero or zero as a topic one uh, or the, the first topic so it can contains carbon climate and blah blah things so those tweets which can uh, contain these words can be uh, clustered into one group and also those tweets which can contain the second uh, uh, the second class or oh, this is the result for the words and their weight in the topic so their contribution so here there are five results for my five clusters and For the model uh, accuracy checking or model analysis perspective, we can use this perplexity and coherence matrix. And perplexity is used to measure the model quality in 
natural language processing, every natural language processing clustering activities. So here, uh, it's better if you have lower score for your perplexity, as if I have negative score, so my model will perform better in this. And also uh, the coherence matrix. Uh, this coherence matrix is the test uh, for the accuracy and topic coherence is measured that compares the different topic models based on their human inter interpretability. So I have used CV or current vectors to provide numeric values to inter interpretability of the topics. Then when you see this, I have uh, almost 58% uh, accuracy or uh, coherence score for my model. And this is much better or reasonably it's good. But if your uh, result will exceed to 80, 80 to 90 percent, so your model is overfitting, so you should have to go back and search, uh, fine tune your uh, model parameters in order to fit, best fit for your data set. And the last step is visualization of your result. So here there is a predefined Python library for data visualization of LD results like Py. Uh, LED this and I have installed it and from the LED result I can see the five clusters clearly and what they are containing which words are in the clusters and also what are if they are overlapping for example if these two shares the same words you can see easily or oh, this graph is calculated based on the silence term or the importance of the term and also the term relevance. So here my presentation ends and thank you for your attention and your patience for waiting me. If you have any doubt, I can. Yeah, so hopefully this is clear. If not, we can actually can discuss any part of the code also in, in Rocket Chat. You know, make sure that if something is not clear, just you know, take a screenshot or something and then you kind of be can have um, can ask like, oh, what does it do or something? You know, it's like it's always just good to ask. So uh, make sure to use this opportunity to to try to even learn how to ask, how to it quickly out of fast learn. Okay. So I think if there is no question, we can close it here, right? Bye, everyone. Bye. OK. Thank you for your patience once again. Bye.